keeping up with the week of having to talk to people who are related to Indiegogo. Yeah. We have the CEO, Andy Yang on. What's going on, Andy? <laughs> uh, nothing much. Yeah. It's uh, hitting the summer. Things are good. Bear is uh, entertaining uh, a heat dome this weekend. So it'd be interesting. We just turned off the fire here. It was like 92 degrees for two weeks straight. And now it's like 70. And I literally went to bed with a sweater on, which is bizarre. Uh, but oh, it just wow. felt like you get so used to the heat. And then all of a sudden it just, it shifts off. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about the Bay. Speaking of that for the two seconds, we're not going to piss off Jason Kilconis. He's going to go on a whole, a whole, a whole rant here. Um, yeah, yeah. we don't want, we don't want to get, you know, J Cal upset and get on the all, all in podcast. Um, yeah. but I, I do want to bring this up that, the, the flocking to Miami during COVID yeah. was a huge deal in Chicago, which obviously is like 9,000 levels below where Silicon Valley was. But, I, you know, I think we're still thriving with $3, $3 billion so far and 21 invested in Chicago-based companies. Absolutely. Latest numbers I saw, almost 10,000 tech jobs have disappeared in Chicago despite those big numbers. Interesting. Uh, and most of it went out to Miami. It used to always go to the coast or go to New York, whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. What is it looking like for you in a couple of facets? Because obviously there's Indiegogo, sure. the, the business and the platform that you manage, but there's also looking for talent. And there's also the companies that are using Indiegogo. And I'm just curious how you view uh, the shift to Miami away from Silicon Valley, or is it kind of a, you know, shame on you, San Francisco, we're mad at you and we'll be back <laughs> in like a year. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's an interesting question because I, I know a bunch of friends in the industry and they've entertained Miami, Austin, um, some are going international, Costa Rica. Yeah. And so it's like in this work from home, remote anywhere uh, environment, it's like, why not take advantage? There is a sense, I would say, that people feel that there will be returned to, you know, air quotes, normal, whatever that will be. But I think for now and for the immediate future, people are taking advantage of remote locations. It's going to be a while before I feel like something will stick. Um, there's been a lot of uh, people that have just congregated in Austin and Miami, but whether that's you know sustains, it, that's the, that's a the million dollar, billion dollar, trillion dollar question. And then other locations, I would say, are, are kind of the quote unquote tier two cities. Um, so people like Bozeman, uh, Portland. Not that those are tier two by any means, but more. Oh no, so yeah, but just a tech, tech from a tech, you know, tech cities. Yeah, and so yeah, no, I and and from an Indiegogo perspective, like entrepreneurs are, you know, they can be anywhere, they are anywhere, not just in the U.S. but globally. So what we're seeing is entrepreneurship crop up in in any geography, any country, and it's it's really democratized over the time. Well, speaking of democratized, we'll get into that uh, yeah. all over the place in Indiegogo. <laughs> I. I tend to agree with you. You know, I, in the, I'm a big fan of remote. I've always been a big remote worker and obviously yeah. I invest in companies and get involved in certain ones and they're all over the place. Um, yeah. in the early stages, I was like, you know what? I think Miami, you know, the mayor's doing an amazing job of luring, selling, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, I've been to Miami and yeah. <laughs> you know, the 22 year old Scott, he's probably going yeah. to Miami uh, the, the 37 year old, yeah, with two yeah, yeah. small kids, Scott, he's probably not. And so I feel like it's like the, the, the world is on vacation a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then we'll, we'll kind of see it flex back. You could sell yeah. me on Austin for sure though. Yeah. Right. It's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of good things in Austin, a little bit more manageable in terms of cost of living than relative to the Bay and even probably Chicago. Um, I think, you know, we were talking earlier, I lived in Toronto for eight years and that's, um, that had a burgeoning tech scene and it's grown a lot. And there was a lot of uh, support from the local and provincial level and even the federal level. So when all kind of uh, stakeholders aligned from the entrepreneurs to the VCs and angel investors to uh, the government and the administrations, really good things can happen. And that continued support will uh, enable these kind of more local or nascent ecosystems to really thrive and, and attract a lot of talent. And the, the cool part about this, and this circles back to you and, and Indiegogo, is the democratization of investing in general. And obviously, I've been at this since 20, you know, 15 before it was actually like live yeah. with the Jobs Act with Republic and others. You know, Ken Wynn and I stood on stage in 20, early 2016 talking about crowdfunding and how it's going to allow literally anyone to invest. But also what you don't know is that companies are going to be able to raise up to their Series A at some point. And we, Absolutely. I think we have a picture of this literally. 
we're talking, we're, you know, we're having a great time. You look out and the lights go on. There's like six people in this room. Yeah. Nobody cared. <laughs> yeah. And to see where it's gone now, you know, yeah. you factor in what you guys have built at Indiegogo and all the crowdfunding sites in general, uh, mm-hmm. both equity crowdfunding and not. Yeah. You factor that in with what happened with COVID, the distribution mm-hmm. of talent and yeah. the access to opportunity. And like, if you thought Indiegogo was on fire for the last 10 years, yeah, I, I got to yeah. think the next 10 years are crazy for you guys. Yeah. And we, what we've seen is, yeah, COVID was a net uh, tailwind accelerator for us. And so, yeah, that just enabled a lot of capital to flow directly to entrepreneurs. And as, as you probably talk about, uh, crowdfunding is a very efficient way to get capital to entrepreneurs. And you know, from a, from a take rate perspective, from all the crowdfunding platforms. Um, yeah, it's, it's super efficient. Um, and that capital can then be deployed very efficiently by the entrepreneurs to make their products and make their, um, uh, make their campaigns come to life. And so it's, it's really exciting time to be in the industry. Um, the industry has been challenged for a number of years before, um, and it's had this, you know, ebbs and flows, but I, I do think a lot of it has matured and a lot of the stakeholders have been, um, you know, throughout the cycle, learning a lot and improving, improving the whole system. I, I totally agree with you. And I, I think the, um, you know, one other side impact of COVID that I think it can't be ignored is the in retail investors, just like mm-hmm. whether you want to look at Bitcoin and, and people getting into crypto, or you want to look yeah. at like getting into Robinhood. Those are people who previously did not look at investing. And I, I know Indigo is not just investing. It's also, you know, crowdfunding traditional. These yeah. people literally didn't know what they were looking at 12, mm-hmm. 18 months ago. And now yeah. they're, they have like a fever pitch for, tell me this startup before it goes public. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that whole yeah. thing is, I think it really uh, advanced the whole story of crowdfunding. It made it, I always thought it was legit, but I think it made it legitimate because the people reading the pitches understood more what they were reading yes. as opposed to the past. Yeah. And the backers have been, you know, we, we use the industry term backers, um, you know, broader consumers or retail investors. And that's been, yeah, really exciting to see that they can educate themselves. And what we're trying to do from an Indiegogo perspective is form that community around the backers. So in the past, Indiegogo, you know, we've spent a lot of time trying to professionalize the company. And now we're trying to recapture kind of the entrepreneurial spirit and focus of what Indiegogo can be moving forward. And so what that means is, you know, helping backers form that community, uh, being a little bit more scrappy in how we push out features and how we kind of weave together the different constituents on the platform. So, you know, on the supply side, there's the entrepreneurs, internally, we call them campaign owners, or COs for short, and a lot of the focus, uh, you know, in the prior years has been on that segment of uh, the ecosystem and now trying to weave the community and the, and the backers to, you know, how they in, 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 interact with the entrepreneurs is, has been a huge focus. So that's super exciting to see. I, I think it's really smart. And obviously you don't need me to, to validate that. It's, uh, it's just really smart to me because you, you see the patterns People like to mm-hmm. invest with their friends. They like to have a common yeah. a conversation about the same thing. And if you give me the backer, the ability to talk to my friends and like, Hey, you guys, did you guys see that thing that was running on Indiegogo? Do you guys want to get in on that? Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's just a product, like we could all yeah, have yeah. a grill. We'll all buy yeah. this grill. Like it's yeah, exactly. I, I just think it's a powerful mechanism. I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys do with that. Um, for the people who are listening to this, who are for whatever, there, there's almost no way if you listen to my show that you don't know what Indiegogo is just because <laughs> of the crowdfunding. Um, but just for a quick one over, like introduce people to Indiegogo a little bit or what today's Indiegogo looks like and what you can do on the platform. Sure. Um, Indiegogo, uh, our mission is to empower people to unite around ideas that matter to them and together make those ideas come to life. And our platform, we're, we're a pioneer in the crowdfunding industry. Um, specifically in rewards-based crowdfunding, or that's the term we use, yep. where people uh, can look at a, a number of different campaigns that everyone, entrepreneurs across the world can put on the platform. And you know, we're really a comprehensive go-to-market platform for these entrepreneurs. So um, entrepreneurs uh, at any stage and companies, uh, small and medium-sized businesses to en- on enterprises can at any stage of their business life cycle or their product life cycle can reach uh, an audience of, you know, really rabid enthusiasts around, primarily around tech and innovation, but across all types of verticals. And so as a consumer, 
uh, for those of you that listen to the podcast, you can go on Indiegogo.com and browse some of the most amazing innovative products and campaigns across the world and, and get inspired and be a part of the process of design to manufacturing to ultimately to the shipping and fulfillment. So it's truly an interactive way for people to participate in kind of product development and ultimately company building. And I don't want to leave out the campaigners either. If you want to do a campaign, uh, you reach out to your team, you just go to launch at Indiegogo.com and, and I'm sure your team will help get the campaigns together. We don't want to leave them out. They all, everyone who's listening, to like half the people want to raise, half the people want to put their money in. Uh, we're here yeah. to facilitate everything. Yeah, absolutely. The entrepreneurs listening to this podcast um, is an amazing way, again, very capital efficient way to raise money. And so it's an alternative to some of the traditional venture capital, angel funding. Um, and so it's also a way that you can do it together. Um, so companies and entrepreneurs that have had successful crowdfunding campaigns attract angel investment, uh, VC investment. So, and we've, we've seen tremendous exits from our platform. So companies that have been really successful on Indiegogo have sold for at times hundreds of millions of dollars. So again, we are uh, you know, that go-to platform for a go-to-market. To me, that's one of the biggest uh, signs or signals, if you will, of mm -hmm. where we are in the market. Because I remember the days of like introducing companies from crowdfunding to VCs and like, oh, yeah, crowdfunded, yeah. huh? And you're like, I, I mean, like the, the first time I knew that there was going to be a thing here was when like a bunch of VCs got real pissed and I was, pissed, <laughs> you know, I was pitching crowdfunding and I, their first thing was like, well, there's going to be a thousand backers on the cap table. And I was like, you have done no <laughs> diligence, like literally yeah, none. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I knew we were going to be in the right place. I, I knew we were going the right place. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's funny because it's like you know we're all, as a platform, Indiegogo as a company is VC backed, so you know we've attracted investment from some of the best VCs in the world. But yeah, for the small and medium sized businesses and and entrepreneurs just starting out, that doesn't necessarily have access to Sand Hill Road in Silicon yeah. Valley. Um, we are, again, uh, very democratized in terms of capital. And that's why the, the founders started the company. They didn't want to be gatekeepers or they didn't you know, want to eliminate some of the gatekeeping that happens in venture capital. And so you don't have to look a certain way or have a certain educational background. Um, you can access mil sometimes at times millions of dollars of capital to make your dreams come true and, and to make your products. And so that's, you know, at our core of our mission. That's what our team is motivated and passionate about. And so we get super excited by partnering and helping entrepreneurs and, 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 and helping them yeah, reach the audience and reach their first customers and enthusiasts. So it's definitely something that keeps me motivated day in and day out. Um, you know, and, and servicing entrepreneurs definitely isn't for the faint of heart. Um, they're <laughs> at times, you know, demanding and mercurial, but yeah, we love them. And, and, and that's what keeps us going. Tell me a little bit about some of the cool stories that you've experienced with some of the founders at Indiegogo. I know, obviously, I think people know how you use the platform and how you can raise money. There's, there's different rewards and perks and it could be equity. It could be all kinds of things. Yeah. What are some of the ones that are more fascinating to you? Like the, it could be the company type. It could be the way they ran it. Uh, yeah. What are some good stories? Oh, um, so many good stories. Like one returning entrepreneur, his name's Sonny Vu. Um, he started uh, the Misfit Watches and ultimately sold it oh, yeah. for, for hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't know if he's been on your show, but uh, amazing. He needs to be. Sonny, come yeah. on my show, please. Yeah, I know. It's, it's an amazing success story. And what he's done is he's founded this uh, carbon printing company. So they can basically um, uh, you know, print anything in carbon fiber. And so he launched a, a number of different campaigns. He's since launched two, but his, his original one for this carbon printing company was a, a, an e-bike called Superstrata. And, and it's taken off uh, beautiful design. And so, yeah, it's, it's great to see repeat entrepreneurs that have been successful coming back into the ecosystem to really also validate, you know, how efficient uh, crowdfunding can be. And so, you know, that's just one of the highlights. And he's since launched a scooter uh, called the Scotsman that is, again, you know, beautifully designed. Um, and so, yeah, like there's these stories of entrepreneurs coming back and, and he's currently living in Vietnam um, and yeah, just building this amazing company. So that's one of the stories definitely that uh, I like to highlight. I love the fact that there, it, this has created this like direct to consumer mm -hmm. system that I, I, I think the, the power users already know. I think yeah. that some of the people out there, 
honestly, scrolling through the site sometimes is better than going on Amazon. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cause you see stuff that like, do you, I mean, I know age wise, we won't go into ages, but I'm just going to assume <laughs> that you're old enough to remember going to the mall and seeing sharper image. Absolutely. You'd walk, yeah, or, yeah. Bro- or Brookstone and Brookstone, you'd walk yeah. in and you're like, what the hell is this? Like, I've never yeah, seen yeah. this there, like a floating pen. Yeah. yeah and you yeah. go on your site and there's all these products that like, you'll never see anywhere else. Yeah. And I think that's one of the coolest parts about it. To yeah. Me. And it's definitely, you know, I'm a gadget guy. I, I grew up, you know, loving sharper image, Brookstone, all those kind of fancier type of gadgets. Yeah. Like, and, and just going on the site, interacting with the entrepreneur, entrepreneurs it's, it's amazing how creative they can be um one thing that uh, recently did really really well was this um uh campaign called the lomi uh it's a canadian company based out of vancouver um uh, basically it's a compost bin that can compost food in you know four to eight hours versus you know days weeks um and it did super well i think it raised close to four or five million dollars um and so as we look at you know trends, things like green tech, things that are better for the earth, that's something that we want to hone in on and, and focus on and elevate on our platform. We're all you know we were talking about the weather earlier, um, and you know we're seeing the heat dome, we're seeing climate change, and so something that's truly powerful about Indiegogo is to help address and and uh, empower entrepreneurs to help innovate to help fight climate change. I I totally can see that and agree with that. I mean I think it's it's very difficult to raise money, particularly in energy saving places, because you've got mm-hmm. to pitch these crazy projections. And the reality is you're really just trying to, you know, rely or, or align with the consumer who will benefit. And this takes it right to the, to the beneficiary. Um, yeah. Last question I kind of got for you is I, I'm just curious, like, given where we are now with crowdfunding, I feel like the last two years, it has advanced maybe a decade. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a crazy advancement as we talked about, where do you think, things are going to start going. Like if you were like, Hey, I'm running this thing. And I, we're focused obviously on the, on the, the backers community and all this stuff, but the North mm-hmm. star, this yeah. is where we think this can go. Where, where do you view crowdfunding potentially take, like, where do you view crowdfunding resting among all the other things that we do uh, for yeah. investor or purchasing or whatever? Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. And I think we have a, a thesis on the world where um, you know, crowdfunding is, is a piece of the ecosystem, but there's more sophisticated, among entrepreneurs seeking capital and seeking sales channels. And so a lot of our successful entrepreneurs will then go on, you know, Amazon, eBay, and, and, and Shopify, and, and all these other great channels. But I feel like there's an opportunity for us to kind of link arms before they kind of cross that chasm yeah. and en- enabling them to do and scale their business and find those channels more efficiently. And so whether that is a return to retail and in-person or more experiential ways where people can experience the product without necessarily purchasing it, but you know, uh, online. And so I think a lot of the bigger companies are also trying to experiment of, you know, retail footprints. How do we get that in-store experience? Uh, because especially in tech innovation, you want to experience those products, you want to try them out. It is a higher price point. And so you're a little bit more reticent to buy it online on Indiegogo or Amazon or any of these other um, marketplaces or platforms. Um, and so I think where we want to see the company go is, yeah, number Number one, we want to bring the crowd back to crowdfunding, which is to infuse community um, in, back into the platform in a new and interesting way so they can interact with the entrepreneurs. And then as we look at the entrepreneur journey, how can we make them more successful in terms of shipping and fulfillment and then ultimately in scaling? And so that's what Indigo is all about. We are one of the most comprehensive go-to-market platforms that can service companies at any stage and then kind of bring them through that. And so we are very uh, partner centric, we're very ecosystem uh, friendly and builders. So we've partnered with amazing companies to surround our entrepreneurs with financing opportunities through a partnership that we have with ClearCo, through manufacturing, we have a great partnership, a long standing partnership with Aero Electronics um, to you know 3PL providers like EasyShip who we partnered with. So we like to partner with the best in class in any part of the ecosystem and provide that to the entrepreneurs. I love to hear that. And I, I think all of the entrepreneurs that, that want to do this stuff love to hear that as well. I think there's a, a bit of a, I don't know, murky line between the finance mm-hmm. part of things and the crowdfunding part of things. And um, I would just like to see over the next few years, it kind of look like part of the journey 
It's not yeah. a choice. It's not a fork on the road. Absolutely. Right now, it's a lot less now than it was before, but mm-hmm. it still feels a little fork on the roadie. And I, I'd love yeah. to see people be like, this is part of my journey. I get the product going. My MVP is here. Maybe I raise a seed round even here. And then yeah. maybe I take the A, but the A is partially crowd so that my initial investors can also participate Absolutely. in the next round. And then, you know, yeah. I, I would love to see that. Yeah. And I, I think that's a, you know, there's so much capital out there. Again, the way it's getting to entrepreneurs has been largely, you know, VC angel investors. So, you know, kind of reliant on personal and professional networks, yeah. but with these platforms like crowdfunding rewards based crowdfunding, where you give 0% equity, uh, to equity crowdfunding, where you know you're democratizing and you're giving away equity to thousands of investors, to yeah companies like Clearco that are doing revenue-based financing or inventory-based financing. I think there's lots of ways for entrepreneurs now to access you know capital in, in new and exciting ways. And hopefully, Indiegogo is one of the choices where, for rewards-based crowdfunding, they can run an amazing campaign and go all the way through their whole life cycle of you know scaling a company. Totally agree. Totally agree. What is one thing everyone should know about you? What's the one thing oh, that people um, who, are, who are here don't know about you? Um, that's interesting. Uh, You're a music yeah, no, guy. Just, you collect things. Like what, what's your, how do you keep, how do you prune how the you flowers behind you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I like running. I, I like getting out outdoors. You know, I have two daughters, 11 and nine. So you know, that comes with its whole own host yeah, of fun so and busy. interesting challenges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just trying to, you know, just trying to make the world a better place. I think we're all trying to make our mark and uh, do things that are, we're passionate about. And if COVID has reminded any, you know, all of us of so, something that, yeah, there's, there's certain things in life that you should dedicate your life to, to, to making the world a better place and, and helping those, you know, your local community around you. Love it. Andy, thank you so much for taking the time. Obviously, everyone listening here, go to Indiegogo.com or hit up launch at Indiegogo.com if you're trying to start a campaign. Andy, thanks. Thanks.